I've been doing Herpes Anonymous and I have been talking about that um, recently uh, when I start my lives. The reason why we're changing it up a little bit doing Herpes Anonymous is because I feel that there's such an important opportunity to be going deep with your questions. So when you submit them to me, I go through them, I review them, I, get, I spend some time on them. These are deeper questions. These are the questions that you're like, eh, I really wouldn't want to ask this person on social media. I don't want Alexandra or people to know my, my name, my handle. Um, so you submit your question anonymously. I'm trying to do hand gestures. Why well, I'm, I'm waiting for you guys to join and I'm working on the anonymous questions. My name is Alexandra. I'm find, founder of Life with Herpes. I was diagnosed with HSV1 in 2003 and HSV2 in 2011. So I've been living with herpes for over two decades. I have been, I was single, I dated, I was single again, I am married. I have a little boy. I've been pregnant with herpes. I gave birth with herpes. Um, so I've kind of gone through it all. The reason why I'm talking publicly about my herpes diagnosis, the reason why I have a platform called Life with Herpes, the reason why I have lifewithherpes.com, the reason why I have thousands and thousands of videos talking about this, excuse me, is because when I was first diagnosed, it was humiliating. It was ostracizing. It was, it was scary. It was, um, it was, thank you for the hearts. It was um, terrifying, right? It was absolutely terrifying. And someone just said, Queen Ray said, I was diagnosed last week. Your toolkits helped me cope with this. You're welcome. Oh, good. I'm glad you have the toolkit. Have you joined the community? Have you joined the secret society? That is um, probably the next best step. The toolkit's awesome. I put a, a lot into that. Um, but join the secret society, which is our private community, is going to be the best thing for anybody who's diagnosed with herpes to do. So I'm going to highly recommend that. So yesterday we answered a lot of great questions for Herpes Anonymous. We had questions from Carlos. We had questions from Naomi. Um, Carlos, Naomi, you guys, which are your pen name, not pen name. Those are your anonymous names. You'll be receiving an email soon with um, from us with the information that I talked about. For those of you that are like, what's Herpes Anonymous? What are we talking about? It's your opportunity to ask your questions that are kind of deeper, deeper than like, what's HSV-1? What's oral herpes? Things like that. How do I get diagnosed? These are your deep, deep, deep questions of, um, I've had a lot about dating someone with herpes. I've had a lot about disclosures. I've had a lot about, um, I've had a lot about like, if I'm asymptomatic right here, um, Hannah, Hannah, um, what have you been diagnosed for over a year and have no outbreaks? Yes, Hannah, you are one of the best case scenarios out there, which means you're asymptomatic. You have lots of people that are jealous of you that have back to back outbreaks. That means that your body's doing everything that it should be doing. It means that your nervous system is healed. Well, I don't know about it, if it is healed, but it's calm. It means that your immune system is strong. It means that you're doing everything, um, to keep it at bay. So I know I'm jealous. I went through the ringer with outbreaks. I've had I've had seasons where it was like back to back to back, even on the antiviral. I've had seasons that I've had seasons without outbreaks. So that's awesome, Hannah, that you're outbreak. I know I know you probably don't feel that way because you're like I was diagnosed. What's going on? What if you have no outbreak but it feels like there is one? Like if you're asymptomatic and feel like you have an outbreak, it could be called viral shedding. It might mean that. Um, the herp, the virus is shedding. So it could mean that you are contagious. If you are asymptomatic, you are still contagious, right? Which is kind of weird to think about. So if you are, have been diagnosed with herpes and you don't get outbreaks, you are still able to transmit herpes. Thank you for the follow. I see the follows. I see the shares. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you have someone that, that you know has herpes and they need to hear this information, please, um, share it with that person. All right. Um, I see you guys viewing the products that I have featured. It is the Lysine Monolaurin. I want to talk about that before we get going because I don't know why I keep getting violations. As a reminder, please ensure your live displays and and describes the products you're, listen, you're listening and your contact. 
I am. I'm just pulling it out, TikTok. Why do you give me a violation? I'm talking about the product that I have pinned and you're penalizing me. You analytics need to go back and watch this because this is ridiculous. Sorry, I'm just getting mad at TikTok because they penalize me every now and then and say that I'm not talking about the products that are pinned and that's exactly what I'm effing doing. Okay, <laughs> got a little heated there with TikTok. Okay, so Lacey and Mona Lauren, what is this? And why do I have it pinned in my shop? And I see you guys checking it out. So in order to understand, so lysine is an essential amino acid. It's a protein that we have to consume from our foods. We get it from foods like poultry. We get it from foods like beef. We get it from foods like um, eggs, dairy products, fish. What it does is it helps with blocking arginine from reaching the cells, right? So what happens is the virus loves arginine. To the virus, arginine is lighter fluid. So we have arginine in our bodies as well. We want to help block that to the, herp to the cells. Lysine helps block the replication. It helps um, decrease the amount of replication the HSV virus is doing in your body. So that's important, lysine, okay, right here. Then we have monolaurin. What the heck is monolaurin? I know when it was first introduced to me, I was like, what the heck is this? Monolaurin is lauric acid. It is originally found in human breast milk. So our mothers, if you were breastfed, your mother gave you lauric acid, AKA monolaurin. Why is that important? Well, and this by the way, is not human breast milk. It's also found in coconuts. So they'd extract it from coconuts here. But what monolaurin does is it has the ability to assist with antimicrobial, antibacterial. Um, it is very beneficial for an overall immune system boost. Um, they talk about people that are, you know, Montezuma's revenge. They talk about fighting other bacterial infections in our bodies. Specifically for HSV, why this is important specifically is because monolaurin helps disrupt the outer layer of an enveloped virus. What the heck is an enveloped virus? The HSV virus is enveloped. What does that mean? It has an outer shell around it. So think of this bottle as, as the virus it has a shell. My hands, I can't penetrate it, right? It's pretty hard. So our immune system can't penetrate enveloped viruses. So what does that mean? It dissolves the outer layer, it disrupts it or does whatever so that our immune system can then go and penetrate it and fight it. So this monolaurin lysine combo is extremely potent for people like you, for people like me, for your friends that you're going to share this with that have herpes. So that's why I have that penned, uh, pinned there. You can take them separately. You could take them together. What I like about the monolaurin lysine combo is because, um, oh good. The ice skating schedule is ready for the summer. Okay. Uh, for my son. Okay. So, um, what I like about it is it's more potency and less swallows. So sometimes you got to take the lysine, you got to take the monolaurin. If you are taking a one-to-one -one ratio, then this is probably going to be your best bet. So that's why I have that pinned for you guys to talk about. I usually try, try to pick up a, a topic, like a supplement to discuss every live, just because I am a believer in these. I'm a believer in supplements. I'm a believer in supporting our immune systems. For those of us that are living with herpes, the more we can do for our immune system is going to be better. The more we can do to boost our immune system, the more we can do to help fight outbreaks. Now, is this a guarantee? Is this going to get rid of your outbreaks? No, right? Is it like guarantee? Oh, you're good. You're cool. You're going to be like our friend who's asymptomatic here. It could help. It could absolutely help. There is no cure for herpes. There is no like pill. It's like, oh, you're good to go. You can just not disclose you have herpes. You're never good. It's like it never happened. No, right? At this point, we don't have a cure. What this does is it's a natural supplement to support us living with herpes. This is something I live by. This is a non-negotiable for me. And this is something I take daily, all right? So I'm, that's my rant. I, I do not mess around with supplements that I take. Um, do, 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 do. should I double up on, so ovulation can cause, not ovulation doesn't cause outbreaks. It's the change in our hormones that cause outbreaks just, just disrupts our system. Um, there's a lot of people that will up their lysine monolaurin dosages when they're ovulating or when they're menstruating. So yeah, a lot of women will up that. 
um, to help protect themselves from getting outbreaks. Yes, I've noticed less outbreaks while taking the products. Okay, let's get to our Herpes Anonymous that I was talking about. These are questions that people have submitted. They paid $5 for them. The reason why I'm doing this is because you guys, when I do my one-on-one -on -one coaching calls, they're expensive and I want this to be available to everybody, right? My coaching calls are expensive. We go really deep. I have a lot of credentials and, and so I'm charging for what it's worth. We also have a support group right? It's less than $20 a month. It is a monthly fee. You get eight calls a month with me, but I still hear from people that are like, Hey, I can't afford that. Or it's too much. So these are $5. So these are right. People submit their questions, $5. I go deep. I do it live so that I can share with other people on the call that might be in a similar situation. And if you have a question, you can submit it for $5 and I will um, go through it. So this one is from grace. My partner who has been diagnosed with herpes before we met, um, we are thinking about getting more serious. I want to understand what this means in terms of our daily life, our daily life and long-term health management. What are the keys and the steps we should take to manage this condition together and how we can keep the relationship healthy, both emo most bleh, emotionally and physically. All right, Grace. So that's awesome that your partner disclosed prior to you getting intimate or when you first started dating. That shows that your partner, I'm not sure, girl or guy, um, your partner is, is um, committed to you. This shows that your, per your partner has integrity in the relationship. This shows that your partner has self-worth, has self-respect, okay? So when you have someone that discloses their herpes diagnosis, as scary, as hard, as terrifying as that might be, it shows that this person really has done inner work, has good morals, and really respects you. So that's one thing I really wanna to bring to the fruition for you, Grace. Um, what does it mean for you? So if you are ready to be intimate, and that's awesome if you guys are, yesterday on the live, I was bringing something up that was a little, um, controversial and I'm going to bring it up again. Uh, someone from the, that submitted a question was like, Hey, I'm like really nervous about being intimate. Like, I don't know how to handle it. What should I do? And my response was then don't, you're not ready, right? Like we think we're ready. Of course it feels good. It's fun. Of course, everybody who doesn't want to be intimate, right? It's what we think is expected of us in today's, in 2024, in the 20s going forward. It's what we think is expected in dating. It's what we think all, all these things, but, and it's like corny or lame to not be intimate, but I'm gonna throw this out there. Do not be intimate with somebody until you're ready, okay? There's no reason to do this. Don't do it because you think your friends want you to do it. Don't do it because this, you think this person's going to be disinterested in you. Don't think of, don't not do it because, or, or like, don't do it because you feel like you're the pressure. Like if you're not ready to be intimate and especially if we're throwing in something as large as an HSV transmission, then don't do it. Something that I'm even more passionate about is we forget that being intimate creates life. It's the most powerful thing that we can do as humans. There's nothing else in this world that we can do that creates life. And we think of it as like such a, like just a nonchalant thing. This is a huge thing. And if you're not ready and if you're nervous about herpes transmission and what, all these little things that go around it and what if I get it and how am I gonna move forward and what a da da da, then you're not ready to be having sex, okay? So back to Grace, who is ready, I'm excited for you, but you're wondering about your daily and long-term health management, okay? Oh, you wanna understand what this means. So again, Grace, if you're ready, awesome. And I'd love to hear you guys, like, do you disagree with me or are you agree with me? Like, I, I don't think I'm like an old fuddy-duddy nun here that's like, don't do this, right? I. I, as someone who has dated, as someone who's been diagnosed with herpes and, and done, like, wait until you're ready. What are you guys thinking? Cool. Um, 
So you want to understand what this means. So what is herpes? Um, so Grace, I'd re I recommend doing as much research as you can. There's some great, and not just Google, go to PubMed, go to Pub, for all of us, go to PubMed, go to Google Scholar. These are places where you can find medical review um, articles and journals. These are places that are not just like Google posting something. Um, you know, going to Reddit, it can be scary. Going to Google and looking at pictures, it can be scary. I want you to be able to get as much information as possible. Obviously, watching these lives, going to life with herpes, being part of this is going to be really, really helpful. Um, know what herpes can look like for your life. For And the thing is, you're not going to know. You may be asymptomatic or it may be something that you that you have outbreak after outbreak. You just don't know, right? So I would ask yourself more like, is this somebody I'm ready to be intimate with? Anytime you're intimate, you take a risk. Anytime you are changing bodily fluids with somebody, you take a risk. I don't mean that intimately. I just mean that in general, right? Like, like my husband has viruses that I don't know about, but I'm taking that risk, right? Like, I'm sure I've picked up things from him and he's picked up things from me, right? You take a risk on changing bodily fluids. So I would decide, like, is this somebody that you want to spend long, long term with? What key steps should we take to manage his condition together? That's awesome. And we can keep our relationship both healthy and emotionally, physically. I would say if you want to, like... Have a like have a peace of mind and take something. I'm gonna talk about the immune support. So let me link it here or not link it. Let me pin it. Um, right here. I'm gonna pin it. So this is for people with herpes. This is also for people without herpes. So if your partner doesn't have herpes, I would say this is probably gonna be the best thing to be taking to boost your immune system. This is not a uh, multivitamin, this is immune support. What the ingredients are, are C, D, E, B6, B12, zinc, selenium, lysine, Asian ginseng, astragalus, echinacea, elderberry, garlic root, green tea, olive leaf, and oregano, okay? So all very strong antifungal, antiviral, antibacterial properties here, all right? So I would highly recommend this for your partner, Grace. I'd recommend it for you. I'd recommend everything that you guys can do to boost your immune system. Another thing that you guys can talk about is like communication. Ask him, what is it like? How often does he get outbreaks? How does he feel when he gets outbreaks? You know, he's going to be feeling like really frustrated and really potentially like insecure as a man. Um, I'm assuming he's a man when um, he has outbreaks and just know that you're there for him. Just know that you're there and saying like, I understand that you're uncomfortable. I understand that this hurts um, and just be there for him as a friend. All right, guys, I think I answered your question. Does anybody else have questions regarding what I, or suggestions to what I said here for Grace um, and regarding her management, her health management and relationship before I move on? Okay. Um, next question here is from Derek. Question on navigating intimacy all right, I've started dating someone who really, who recently informed me she has herpes. This could this is completely new territory for me. I want to navigate it correctly, especially when it comes to intimacy. What precautions should I consider? How can I discuss open with her to ensure? Me? Okay, so this is basically very similar to what Grace had to say. Great point, Paige. Um, you just brought up a great point. Yeah, you have to remember that HPV can't be tested in men. I don't know why I'm congested. So you always have to, you always take a risk, not just with people with HSV. That's such a great point. Yeah, there's STDs out there that we're not testing for. There's STDs out there that men cannot be tested for. Yeah, do you want to pick up HPV from your partner? It's a risk, right? That's a great point. We think because we have herpes, we're the big bad guy here. And we forget that the person that we're telling is not immune to herpes, is not immune to other STDs, is not immune to other things. You're just the one that has been dealt with 
the responsibility of initiating a disclosure. That's what you've been dealt with. Now it's your responsibility to communicate that to a partner, opposed to the partner um, just going about like, I don't know, I don't care, like, I don't know, well, it's fine, like, of course we're fine. Remember, maybe people are getting diagnosed or getting tested, but they don't realize they're not getting tested for herpes. They probably think that they are, but they're not. And of course, you're not going to get herpes. I'm not going to get herpes. No one's going to get herpes. Like, that's what we think. Like, I'm, I'm good. I'm above that. I'm not going to, ooh, that's such a dirty one. I'm not going to get that. You know who gets herpes, right? Like, those are all the things we tell ourselves before we actually get herpes and then realize, oh, no one's actually benign from it. Yeah, I wish schools were better at teaching this too. I wish we all were better at teaching it. You know, you hear adults, you hear parents that like, I don't know, you hear, it was adults, you hear people, oh, well, of course she has it. Oh, well, she had a fun time. Or yet, you know, they had a fun time before they were married. And it's like, you don't know that. You know, having multiple partners or having one partner doesn't make you a better or worse person. It doesn't make you, like, we think that if we haven't had a lot of partners, then we're at a better, we have a better chance of not getting herpes. That's total BS. I believe that. I totally believe that. I believe that, yeah, like, I, I didn't have a lot of partners. I was very selective. I thought I'd be fine. Obviously not, right? Okay, back to Derek. Derek wants to know, he started dating someone, she has herpes, it's new territory, he's never dealt with it, how do I navigate it, especially when it comes, okay, to sex. Um, Derek, have you been tested for herpes? Do you know that you do not have it? That's something to definitely look into. We all think we don't have it, and then we have it. Like someone earlier on this call, on this live, she's asymptomatic. So I'm assuming that you went in, why did I get another violation? Your video. I don't understand. It's ridiculous. Um, okay. So go get tested even if you don't think you have herpes, right? So, oh, I know why. Because someone on this live was saying, okay. Go get tested. So being asymptomatic means that you're contagious, means that you can transmit herpes, means that you're positive for herpes. I did a post earlier on Instagram and like polling people. I actually also posted it here on TikTok. Gosh, I have an itch. Posting it on TikTok um, saying, if you're asymptomatic, are you good to go? Does it mean you have herpes? Yes, you have herpes, even if you are asymptomatic. So back to you, Derek. You may have herpes and not know it. So that's something I would ask yourself and make sure. Because this may not even be, it might, might be a moot point. You both might have herpes and then it's a different conversation. If you and your partner have the same type of herpes, so let's say you guys both have HSV1, you both have the virus. Now, can you pass it back and forth? There's a lot, I, I've heard... Some doctors say like, hey, no, you're good to go. I've heard other doctors say like, hey, I still would be careful like when your partner has an outbreak. But in general, um, you're good to go. You both already have it. So I would go get tested. Again, what's the best way to navigate this correctly, especially when it comes to intimacy? Communicate, 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 communicate. What are some ways we can prevent transmission? Number one, communication. Just because you're disclosing up front that you have herpes doesn't mean the conversation's over about herpes. You can communicate, hey, I feel like I have an outbreak or hey, I feel run down or I feel tingly or I feel this or I feel that. Number two, if you want, you can take the antivirals. So you can take the antivirals. That's something that has to be prescribed by your doctor and it can help lessen the transmission rate by 41, 48%. So it can be very helpful. Not everyone takes the antivirals. I don't take antivirals. You don't have to take the antivirals, but you can. The next thing that we could do, and I'm gonna pin it, is I talked a lot about lysine and arginine earlier, or lysine, arginine, monolaurin on the call, but let's talk specifically about lysine, okay? 
Glycine is the essential amino acid. It's the protein that helps block the replication of the virus. It's very, very helpful. It's very, very potent. It does a really good job. I have a couple of videos that you guys can go back and check and circle back on that show um, data. Why am I be getting violated? I don't effing understand this. Your video, I, I don't understand. This is ridiculous. Am I being like, how am I, do you guys think that I'm like violating anything here? Like, I think I'm pretty clean and I think it's pretty, TikTok is so buggy with, it's ridiculous. Like I'm not, I'm showing the product that is pinned. They get me all, they get mad at me when I do that. I don't know. It's ridiculous. Um, nope, you're fine. Yeah, this is ridiculous. Um, I have some other videos you can go reference on TikTok that talk all about lysine. It's like a whole series. It's really great. But anyways, this is going to be great for the people that have herpes that want to help lessen their symptoms. When I say lessen, potentially, okay? We can't, I can't say that it's going to get rid of them because there's no cure for herpes. But this is something I take and this is a non-negotiable for me. And this is something that I believe helps my outbreaks, okay? So this is something that's going to be really great if you are wanting to protect your partner. The next thing is going to be monolaurin. Let me pin it. Oh, they took away my products. Okay. Can't add to live. Wow. Wow, TikTok. Okay. Well, I'm going to add this now, TikTok, which is the product I'm talking about. I don't know why I'm getting violated. This is ridiculous. Um, TikTok is ridiculous. Like, it really is. Guys, I also go live on YouTube. So if you don't want to put up with this, you can go to YouTube. Um, but Mono Lauren, okay? Also very helpful for really anyone. But specifically, we're talking about herpes outbreaks. So this is going to help us with the enveloped virus. It's gonna help our immune system penetrate the virus so it can go do what it needs to do. That's basically the quick version of it, okay? Very, very, very helpful. Um, so again, if you have herpes, don't have herpes, you're traveling, you feel like you have an outbreak, all sorts of things, this is gonna be a really great resource for you. Um, and I'm just a huge fan of monoline. All right, next product that I'm gonna talk about, if I can, which is absolutely BS, is Andrographis, because I keep getting in trouble. This is so weird. Um, Andrographis, Where did my, my little boy was in my box of herpes tricks. So there it is. Okay, Andrographis. Also extremely potent, it's an extract that's very helpful in our immune system support. This also is something I take daily. So the three things I take, monolaurin, lysine, and Andrographis, help me with the prodrome, help me with basically all the herpes related issues I have. Um, and I feel like it, it significantly helps me lessen my outbreak. Now that's just me and that's my side of the story. Um, and I, rec I, I would take that. So that's what I would do for our friend over here. What was your name? Derek. Those are some things that I would talk about. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to get off TikTok before they like completely ban me because they're being like that. Um, have a great day. Thanks for joining me. I will be live again tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific time. So I hope to see you all tomorrow and not get in trouble from TikTok. All right. Have a great day. Bye guys.